we're recording this time and not streaming to an empty cloud that happened last builds. Sorry. There are two continuity errors in this video. I missed a couple of steps and I did them out of order. I usually like to leave these mistakes in, but for a better instructional video, I put these steps in their proper place in the instructions. Minus one big one at the beginning. I'm sorry. So let's get to it. Today we're gonna to be building the Morse Monkey. You go ahead and find it at Grapevine Amateur Radio. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're gonna do is a inventory. Battery holder, which was off screen. We're just gonna put in a little bowl. Check. Capacitors marked 105. Check. Capacitors marked 475. Two, three. Check. Capacitor marked 474. 13 resistors. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15. A resistor, one of them. And I think it's this one, yellow, violet, red. Yellow, violet, red. Perfect. Four resistors at 2.2K, 2.2K, one, two, three, four. One rotary encoder and this knob. It, knob. A power switch is here. Two 3.5 millimeter audio jacks, one, two. A program MCU board is here. Oops, I skipped the inductor. LCD screen, four transistors, one, two, three, four. And I skipped one thing, this MOS, MOSFET transistor. That is on this guy right here. 20 pin DIN socket, which is this guy. 28 pin, sorry. A circuit board, nylon screws and nuts, which I already threw in the bowl because they were kind of loose. There we go. I think I'm ready. Think I'm ready. at a time. First one got in there pretty fast. Second one's kind of having a little issue. I'm gonna admit, these are a little bit of a pain to put on. And it's soldering time. Not look too bad, okay. We got the LCD on there. <laughs> I messed up already, but that's fine. I was going over things you needed, and I did start at number one. That's okay. We can keep going. All right, but starting the smallest profile, using the parts list, locate 10, these guys, the 10K resistors. They are in one, two, three. So let's just grab the first one, and they're gonna go into R1. Here we go. That looks better. Try R1 again. R2, R2. These aren't the droids you're looking for. R3, R7, R8. Stop there and just solder. I just found R14, it's at the top here. Took me a while to find it. 15 here on the side. Yeah. 
that is all of the 10K resistors. And next we are gonna move on to the 4.7K resistor. And it's only one and it's at R12. Doo -doo -doo. It was the one with the yellow, violet, and red. Yellow, violet, red. Got a blob. Let's start again. Like that. Solder sucker. Four 2.2K resistors. And they're gonna go at 23, 24, 25, and here is the R13. And cut these off. And here we go. Done with step four. There's a giant note I missed that's saying you need to jumper out some of the resistor connections. So these leads that I clipped off, I'm using needle nose pliers and I'm holding it tight there, then just bending down the leads to create these little jumpers. So we're gonna need five of them. So, so far I did three. So out there, bend, five. When I realized this was an issue, I know this is jumping a bit in the video here, when I turned on the board, none of the rotary options worked. I went back in the instructions and I realized I missed this step. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to jumper R4, 5, and 6 first. Remove the power. No! I had it! There we go. There's one. R5 is next. Here. These jumpers had a tendency of falling out, so I'm going ahead and bending these up. Two of these fell out. R4 fell out. Let's get that right now. R6 was right there. Step five is a little too long to put on screen, but if we are gonna be soldering in place the socket connector for the MCU and the little microcontroller and the LCD screen that we did earlier. Oops. Come on, you want to go in there. Continue to solder. Just be patient when you're soldering that inverter chip. It takes a bit to warm it up. Since I already have the LCD on the board, we can skip that part and go to the capacitors. Looking for capacitors with the 105. There we go. Take that and throw it in the trash. They go into C4, 5, and 11. There we go. 11, C11. C4 is right here. I'm gonna do this trick again and have this hold them in place, flip it over. Now we're looking for 475 capacitors, three of them. And again, I'm just gonna cut them right off of here. Uh-oh. There. And these capacitors are going to C3, 8, and 10. 
It does note in the instruction set these capacitors are smaller than the holes or the pins are smaller than the holes that we're going to be doing down here. So you will have to bend them out. So when you bend them, grab the top so it doesn't disturb the capacitor itself and the dielectric. So let's go ahead and focus back on the board. C3, 8, and 10. Next up is the single capacitor marked uh, 474. And I kind of regret cutting them so high. I'm going to see if I can cut this lower. And have a little bit more of these pins to work with. There it is. Perfect. And it's going to go into C7, which is right here. Next, we're doing the audio jacks, 3.5 millimeter audio jacks. One there, one there. I'm just going to use this to hold it in place. Here's the next one. The big inductor goes there. Cut the leads. The power switch. Hey. Stay on there. Soldering the power switch now, which is right here. Six pins. Now I'm looking at the board and it does have a one pin indicated by that square, but it does not matter on these power switches. Oops. All right, that's 14. Q1 and 5, install the transistors where the flat faces are marked the outline of the circuit board. Q1, I think is this guy. Q1 is here. Two, three, four, and five. To get these off, I'm just cutting on the cardboard just a bit so it doesn't go flying off. Then you can easily tear that off. Look at that, it's clean and ready to go. These ones came on these cardboard are bent nicely so you can put them into the board. The other one you had to bend the wires. Here we go. One final one. And now just double checking the faces. The flat face there, flat face there, flat face there, flat face there, and flat face there. Perfect. Again, I'm just going to hold this there, turn it over, and there we got our starter points. one again come back to it let it cool down move it on to the next one when it gets hard to get solder or apply the solder to the joint that means the tip needs to be retinned because it's not transferring the heat well go ahead and try that again there we go Look at that, perfect. And we're going back and fixing this one. Coming along, attach the battery. So it does note there was a mix up with these screw holes, they're not drilled right. So you can only insert one of these screws. Alright, so I'm going to use the far one. 
push that nut in there and get it in place. Maybe there's a better way of doing this. Please let me know in the comments, but I can't get this screw started. Moving on. Moving on. I'm gonna go get some glue. Cannot find any glue. So what we're gonna do is just solder these in and be very careful. One, two, flip them over. Power. Negative lead. There we go. Next, we're going to be installing the rotary switch. So, one side has three pins, the other side has two pins, and the middle has the one. Well, it looks like you gotta squeeze this bit to get it in. There it goes, one side, come on. Push that, there it is. So get those three and those two. Before installing a 28 pin microcontroller. Sorry, I mumble while I read it out loud. So let me go ahead and read it to you straight. Before installing the 28 pin microcontroller, you should use a DVM to test the voltage on the 28 pin socket to ensure that the voltage is correctly polarized. The pin numbers are 8, 19 are ground or negative. Pin 13 is a positive supply. Also, pin 27 will be ground and pin 28 will be positive. We're going to test ground here. So, pin 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. That's one ground. There we go. And pin 13. The reason why there's no beep here is that pin 13 is positive and 19 is negative, so there's no connection. Got it. And pin 8. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Perfect. Now hit pin 27 and pin 28 is positive, so no beep. All right, I think it is happy. So let's get the Geica controller out. Looking for the half circle at the top of the chip. Match it with the half circle on the bottom. And one final check to make sure all the pins lined up before you push in. <laughs> and now, batteries. I don't have batteries. Why do I don't have batteries? All right. Make sure it is off. Moment of truth. <gasps> it turned on. So cool! There it is! It's working! Sweet! Well, I don't have a key, but I uh, will be getting one soon and trying to learn some worse code. So until next time, y'all, go forth and conquer! You can help support the channel by Patreon or YouTube memberships. Links in the description below. And a thank you to all my supporters. Go forth and conquer.